Borderlands 3, Gearbox, April 3rd, 2019. See more then. All right, guys, let's move on into the tech news section that we've got today. And in tech news, one of the biggest things that uh, I've been tracking, for those of you who have been here and watched since January, our initial show, I talked about a product called Shadow PC. So today I'm going to bring up a, a product called Stadia. I'm going to go ahead and roll the video on this so you can see a little bit of information about it. Then we'll get into it. Together, I think we can create a new games experience and build for everyone. Welcome to Stadia. Our vision for Stadia is simple. One place for all the ways we play, where the worlds of watching and playing games converge into a new generation game platform built for the 21st century to connect game developers with players and YouTube creators in a way that only Google can, creating a richer and more vibrant gaming community for everyone to enjoy. On Stadia, you just need to click on a YouTube video or link and you can be playing your game instantly with no download, no update, no patch and no install. With Stadia, this waiting game will be a thing of the past. Wouldn't it be even more magical if that same game and that same instant experience could be available across any screen in your life? At launch, we'll support being able to play games across desktops, laptops, TV, tablets, and phones. It is not a concept, it is not a test, it is real. When Stadia launches, we will have increased performance significantly to support resolutions up to 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR and surround sound. We couldn't be happier to be bringing Doom Eternal to Stadia and are thrilled to announce that the game will be capable of running at true 4K resolution with HDR color at an unrelenting 60 frames per second. I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of the Google hardware family, the Stadia Controller. The Stadia Controller features two very important new buttons. The Capture button is for saving and sharing your game experience back out to YouTube. And the second one is the Google Assistant button. Instead of grabbing a laptop or a phone, they just need to push the Stadia Controller to get the help from the Google Assistant. But when all of your clients are in the cloud, Couch Multiplayer has new life again through Stadia in what we're calling Stream Connect. With Stream Connect, we're making it possible to realize split-screen multiplayer without any performance penalty. We're always looking for ways to strengthen the connection between creators and viewers. With Stadia and a new feature called Crowdplay, you'll be able to simply click a button displayed right in the stream and jump in and play with YouTube creator you're watching. Established creators will have new ways to engage and monetize on YouTube with Stadia features. And with aspiring creators, we're going to break down the barrier of entry and capturing content by giving you the ability to highlight, live stream, and capture directly from Stadia. Today, we are forming Stadia Games and Entertainment, which will build experiences designed exclusively for Stadia I'm thrilled to announce that Stadia is launching this year, 2019. And together, build a playground for every imagination. All right, so Stadia. Now let me let me tell you why I brought this up to the crowd again here while it's rolling in the background. Shadow PC, as used by members in the actual tavern, I have an account. I've let several of them use it and play games. Uh, my brother introduced it to me many months ago. He's been using it, and it was all in conjecture to me giving him a raft of crap constantly about his ten-year-old PC. He is a tech industry person like myself. He programs on his computer as a, as a daily job thing, both side work and for work. And I give him crap all the time about his 10-year-old computer, especially because he wants to play Star Citizen and those types of games with us. So he found Shadow PC. 
Now, Shadow PC is the same thing as what you're seeing in Stadia, only slightly different, right? So they give you a whole Windows 10 desktop. You load the game that you want onto it, play, full speed, full screen. And what you get, basically, is a real high-end CPU, 12 gigs of dedicated memory, uh, 250 gigs of SSD or faster hard drive, and a 1080 uh, an NVIDIA 1080 graphics card all being sent to you over the wire. So you're sending keyboard and mouse back, they're sending you the screen refresh. And the, those frames don't take as many megabits per second as you think. So what's going out in HDMI link or what's going out uh, your display port link to your monitor, that amount of bandwidth is something that you can accomplish in as low as cell phone communications, 10 to 15 mega, megabits per second per shadow PC. Now we know with Stadia they're saying 4K gaming, so we got to step that number up. And truly, if you're if you're certain that you're not going to have any real problems, you kind of want to be getting up around 40, 50 megabits. I tested this with Star Citizen, Black Desert Online, and um, crap, one other major one. Anyways, the point is I played them full screen, full resolution, 1080p because that's what my monitor does, set to 4. 40 and then set to 50 megabits zero latency i didn't feel any real lag or any problems that were going on and i was able to play just fine now i still have a little concern that there's going to be something with that fast twitch you know super high speed run through stuff but that's shadow pc and they're a small company and they only have a few data centers this is where stadia becomes such a big subject for me stadia is done on google's technology on google's backbone via their fiber so when you tap into one of the Google uh, um, data centers, it's likely right in your neighborhood. You're not you know, crossing overseas somewhere or going across 15 states to get to your nearest one. They've got hundreds and hundreds of these things everywhere. So you're likely just a few milliseconds off of them anyhow. And it really boils down to how quick do you connect to your ISP, not how quick do you connect all the way across the internet to the game server host. Because once you're in the cloud, you're running across their fiber backbones to those games hosted there. Add to that now something really cool that I thought was really interesting. With Shadow PC, or if I use my computer, and I play a game and I want to stream it, I have to turn on the streaming application, and now I have to render the game, play the game, and enjoy the game, while I'm also trying to render and send that out to Twitch. In the Stadia universe, you say stream, and it's just Google sending a copy of that to their own server, YouTube, so that others can watch. Now, the other cool thing with that is I hit, I, I can hit a thing called uh, capture. It's it's a stopping point, basically. I'm, I'm going to run through MMC. I'm in the uh, second level, and I've got to go through this third stage. And I'm having a hard time with the third stage. So I can punch a button, and it'll capture that moment in time in my game. And then I can send that over to Triad. Triad can push a button jump in and play that either against a ghosted version of myself he can play it through for me or he can just play it for himself and be able to run it too and see what he would have done differently so there's a neat little trick there plus on top of that he could just be watching my stream and come in as this like command version watching the stream reach into the stream reach into my game and put markers down and show me like there's a bad guy that's going to be right here you need to tuck into this this hidey hole right there and, and make sure you're in cover totally new cool tricks all stata stuff that it can be done well again the games have to support it whether or not it's cheating i see what you're saying there master and yeah there are things like that everybody's going to deal with um so we got to see how it's going to progress the point still remains what we're looking at is you can be watching a trailer for Borderlands 3 this year in YouTube and because they may have partnered up with Steam to, de to deliver their product and or Stadia at the end of the trailer you'll hit a button that says join or play now and it will instantly become full screen Borderlands on your computer and you haven't installed or done anything you just have a Google account and boom you're back in so there's a lot of amazing tech that goes with this tell me what you think pros and cons guys triad okies jump in here so something actually just occurred to me while we were watching this. Aside from, obviously, because you have to be able to control the game, um, aim hacking could still be a thing. Nope. Hacking is actually oh. one of the things that they dealt with specifically you cannot do with this game. I think there'll still be a way around it for aim hacking, but other types of hacking I probably won't exist. You know, you, you wouldn't be able to get uh, speed hacking or... Um, 
in game all hacks or anything like that. Yeah. Right, exactly, because you can't really execute the code because it's not local to your machine. You're streaming the game From through this source. program for yep. it. So we actually got an answer to that. Oh, their really? deep their deep cell super learning. The the current uh, way that they're using their AI learns how players play, and it will automate and ban people who are not playing, like to the point where if people are superhuman, with aim, it will know. Nice. They're already planning to implement that and then source that out to other game companies as well. So so it will know, like, if if we have the next Shroud or the next Ninja or next, you know, major pro gamer on our team that has just those ungodly superhuman reflexes to, you know, make some of the shots and, like, just flip, flip around and, like, make a headshot just instantly and nobody yeah. even knew what happened. Yeah, it's going to ruin It'll the Fortnite the players. <laughs> so, so what they do is because, because you have to put inputs into their system, it'll know the difference between your input and what happens when, you know, the hack activates. So we're, we're going to see some serious capabilities there. Um, what I really want to point out here, though, is this. The people who tested the product Shadow PC, because that's what we've tested. Obviously, this is not out until later this year, but it is out later this year, Stadia, was this. Rafrica, who we're going to hear from later on, had a, a really bad computer system, and he wasn't able to enjoy Star Citizen or one of the games, whatever it was. So he took over my Shadow PC and loaded it up and played the game. And he was able to play it flawlessly, full screen, the whole schmear. Now, that's Shadow PC, and Shadow PC has these small data centers, and you know he had to cross-connect from his state to where my data center is located in, in, in another state. With Google, of course, he's going to jump right on. The barrier of low-end computers to be able to play these games goes away and then people say okay but that's going to cost money no matter what right so we talk about shadow pc is a good benchmark they're 35 dollars a month um if you were to go buy a computer right now that is at this level of, of ability now stadia is the latest gpu custom created by amd it's going to be a vega 56 or 64 monster comparison tied together with some special cpu from intel and it's unique on that card. None of, nothing we can buy, but guaranteed setup for this whole solution. In Shadow PC, they put in monster graphics cards on a giant multi-slot board, and you basically get time on that in your virtual machine. The point being is, you can spend that 30 to $35 a month, get all these games in Stadia, they're teaming up with Steam, so a whole library of games to be able to play, or you can save up 30, 35 bucks a month until you can afford a $1,500 to $2,000 computer which is what it would take to put all that equipment into one to play a 4K 60 frame per second monster, right? Well, here's the equivalent. $1,500 now, you get it today, there's your computer. Or you spend the 30 bucks, $35 over time. How much time will that buy you? I did the math, it's over four years. So that means if you're paying $30, you're gonna get 48 months, four years worth of top end compute playing that you can do on your cell phone, your tablet, your TV, Android enabled, your iPad, your PC, if you got you know some Chromebook or something like that, anywhere from anywhere on the planet, pick up right where you left off when you change devices, and at the end of the four years, you still have a top of the line Billy Badass system, as opposed to that four year old computer you built four years ago with fifteen hundred dollars that you can only use when you're sitting at home. So the barrier gets knocked down and brings more players into the gaming universe, which you know that's kind of what Chili's Tavern is all about. Let's get people playing the games and enjoying the community. Add to that, of course, they have their joystick, and we're probably going to see other hardware coming out for them. Add to that all the other features, like if you could never stream, because you may have had enough computer to play the game, but you didn't have enough computer to play and stream, because it would wreck your computer. That goes away. So there's just so many more advantages to this that it really becomes something to start thinking about and talking about. Now, it's not going to somehow in the PC world. We're not going to see it disappear. What we're likely going to see is people using consoles to get onto this thing, people using their PCs to get on this thing, and the PC players are still going to keep their computers and play their games their way. Maybe have both like me, where I can say, leave this monster computer here, take my tablet downstairs and be able to continue playing my game and enjoying some relaxing time while I'm doing that. Or, you know, head over to Triad's place and be able to pick up my game and play right there from his computer, even though I'm, you know, playing on a game he doesn't own. Because... I have access to my account, my games, via Stadia. So there's a lot of features and functionality there. Um, questions about this? Anybody want to throw a question down? 
I'm taking a look here at what the crowd was saying. Solve a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, so that there was there is a current um, run on the the information out there, which was funnily enough, the company who first posted this on a website was an Nvidia owned company. Um, but th there's there's the complaint that there is already a latency issue with this the Stadia. Hmm. The problem is the people who are testing it are testing it on their base system, not the backbone system we use for search engines currently. That won't be implemented until later this year when it effectively launches. Yeah. But just a note, their complaint about latency was a complaint that we were getting 166 milliseconds of lag. Okay, so... I, I played Division 2 as a reference. I played Division 2 on the US server when I joined you, and I'm pretty sure it's 233 mil, uh, milliseconds is my latency difference. Well, now see, remember the the latency is going to be just in your screen refresh, what have you. Now you're still going to feel that if there if that exists, if you're on slow internet, etc., and you're trying to play the game, the latency is between you and that screen refresh, not the game and player versus player or the game and the server, etc., because that's all backbone. So that's why I said mainly it's going to be based on you having about a 20 megabit connection to keep that ping rate down, to keep that speed down, or that that latency down, that speed up. So it's, um, they did a worst case scenario test, which was where this reference comes from. At 15 megabits per second, the connection was still 188 milliseconds. Yeah, and you're talking about something that cheap cell phones can do. Yeah. You know, not with the advent of 5G and people jumping at least all to 4G, if not 5G later on. And, and with, this, with how big broadband so, has become globally. So this is on the test backbone. This isn't on the system active. That's what they're saying. When the system is active and running, which is the same search engine you use when you log in, the the system itself, they're hoping to get it below 50 to as low as 70, uh, sorry, 7, depending on how far away you live. A from, 7 millisecond From their nearest difference. node. So yes. how far you live from their nearest node. So the bulk of us in the metro areas are going to feel 7 millisecond to 15 millisecond, meaning non non-issue. The worst of us are going to see 150 millisecond, and yeah, no, your, your 50, fast twitch one, Fortnite. What's that? They're planning. They're, they're planning 50. Yeah, no, no, no worldwide. I'm is saying the highest that people will get. Yeah, okay. Well, that would be awesome if 50 is the highest they can get. Now, again, on the most precise fast twitch style game, somebody could complain at that scenario, but that's only in that scenario. Everybody else, 90% of us who game, are never going to feel 50 milliseconds, and we certainly nobody can feel seven to ten. So, just as a reference, um, this is why this is why I brought this up. Uh, lag integration in any software server, so any video game you ever play, does not kick in until over a hundred milliseconds. So you're not considered as lagging until over a hundred milliseconds. Nice. All right. Well, we gotta stop beating this dead horse. Stadia, yeah. watch for it, you guys. It is one of the new technologies coming out. Nvidia's got its own. Shadow PCs out there. I'm sure Amazon's probably gonna jump onto this damn bandwagon eventually. Um, moving on here, games as a service. So some of the topics that we have here are some of the things that are changing. Right out of the gate, you're going to see what looks like an Oculus Rift, but it's not. Who is this made by Triad and why? So this is leaked, or I guess quote-unquote leaked, uh, images of Valve's new VR headset, the Index, I believe it's called. I don't know, remember the full name of it, but these are like the first screens that we have here of what Valve's new headset is going to be. And with the announcement of the Oculus, I think it was the Oculus S or Oculus M, which will be the next line on the Oculus, which will actually solve a lot of the problems that the original Oculus Rift had, I will be curious to see what Valve's uh, new headset will do because everything that I've heard is that the Vive has always been better than the Oculus, though the Oculus had better controllers. And this might actually i'm wondering i'm curious because valve usually goes big when they do these kind of things so i'm curious to see how big they go with their vr headset well and one of the things that i'm noting right out of the gate in the secondary images there are two cameras facing forward on it that are not on my oculus as i'm looking at it right here next to me all and there seems to be better speaker system too because these little speakers on the oculus are a little bit lackluster don't fit quite right all the time so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with in some new hardware here. But there are more people getting into that AR, VR game, and this is a big one. When you say Valve. What, what this does is um, Valve had to 
work on their own system because they were finding that they actually couldn't do things they wanted to do with the hardware because the company wouldn't let them. So by doing this, they bypass any restrictions in modifying the system. Mm. Well. So now it can be custom tailored to be for the Valve and Steam experience. No doubt, no doubt. All right, moving along here. Uh-oh, who's a Fortnite fan? I'm not a Fortnite fan, never have been. You guys all know how much I love Battle Royale games. Just love them to death. In the news recently, though, Fortnite <clears throat> had a bad update. That update has sent some of their top players into streaming Uno, which I know is a heavily contested battle-style game that's you know, got so much action and adventure and what have you. But seriously, an update that causes people to leave your game and play and stream other stuff, let alone Uno. What's coming? What's going on here? What's what's happening to Fortnite? I mean, realistically, it's just just a bad update. I mean, they'll probably fix it, but it will be inter- it's, It is interesting to see that you know this game, this game's company, Epic Games, and this game, this battle royale that's been like dominating the play sphere for so long now you know that it's basically become the next big game to just throw out an update like that that you know people were testing giving feedback saying hey no these changes aren't good and to just release something that is literally causing your pro players to just up and leave your game that's that's kind of bad in my opinion that's that's not good i mean i'm sure that they'll fix it pretty quickly but you know i I, hopefully this will be a little bit of a wake-up call for epic that you know yeah you might be sending on piles and piles of money from making one of the most successful games of all time, but don't get too big for your britches. I'm going you know, to move us forward, but I want to get this one last thought in there. It's a trip up like this to put Blizzard where it's at. Let's see what they what this company does with it. In any case, hmm, Blizzard, hmm, EA, Okies. What is this crap about EA laying, laying off people? Why, why are we coming back three months in a row now talking about layoffs in the in the gaming industry, EA being the latest publisher to make huge layoffs. What do you, so what do you it's hearing? not it's not just uh, in this industry, but this is the problem when we talk about. Um, what happens is a lot of these companies will make their game, push the products out, and then reduce their staff size because then when the profit comes in, they can say they made double the profit because they have no incomes to pay. Well, that's a craptastic way to handle things. They're going to get my downvote on that. Yeah, um, we haven't heard as much from EA a lot uh, about all of this because a lot of the mainstream, you know, YouTubers and stuff won't talk about this because they're part of the Game Changer program and they're l- l- technically not allowed to under their contract. Yeah, yeah, but the point still remains. The public's going to see this, not look kindly upon it. They're going to see it in the light of Blizzard and what has been going on there. And all I can say is I hope those people getting laid off find great jobs at places like Chris Roberts, uh, product, Star Citizen, etc., or with Steven and IS, you know, in, Intrepid Studios, yeah. games that are worth it and worth their time. And I and I want to see and, more of that happening. And as a note, the, the number actually was pushed up from what I spoke to yesterday. It is twenty seven hundred and forty people wow. that have already been laid off. That's just a hit in the industry. I mean, that's just something inevitably we're going to feel. Well, you know. My hat's off to EA. Another fun way to just screw things up for us. And I left you a long time ago, but damn. All right. I'm just, I can't even with those.